System architecture is a key to an effective digital transformation, especially in today's day and age of a plethora of technologies that any organization needs to succeed in the future, system architecture is just becoming more important. But what exactly is system architecture and how does it apply to your digital transformation? That's what I'm gonna talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And system architecture is something that's always been important in digital transformation, but it's just becoming more important over time. If you think about all the different technologies that organizations need to succeed, you think about their financial systems, their warehouse management systems, supply chain, human capital management, you've got smart factories, internet of things, industry 4.0, robotics on the shop floor, a lot of different things happening within organizations that require different technologies that need to come together to provide common business processes and visibility into what's going on throughout your operations. So what I wanna talk about in today's video is what exactly is system architecture, what are some examples of how system architecture looks, and how does it apply to your digital transformation? So the best way to think about system architecture is a visual representation of how different technologies within your landscape tie together. And the first step is to understand what those technologies are. And a lot of organizations, you'd be surprised, are not fully aware of what all the different systems are. We have one client, for example, that has several hundred different ERP systems, or so they think, but they can't name them. They don't have them documented anywhere. They're not entirely sure how many exactly they have. But that's a good reminder that it's important to understand what your systems are and how they all tie together. So let me just show you a quick example here of what we commonly see with some of the clients we work with. So for example, a lot of organizations start with a core ERP system. And when I talk about system architecture, by the way, I'm talking about either current state or future state or both. The same concept applies whether you're trying to assess where you are today, and it also applies when you're defining your future state as well. So the first thing that you often see is ERP software. So that's oftentimes sort of the central core master record system of truth for a lot of your financial inventory management types of transactions. But oftentimes ERP software is not enough to address all the needs of your organization. Oftentimes you'll have other systems like you'll have a CRM system for sales. You'll have a HCM system and that's for your HR department. You might have supply chain software this would be sort of your, your procurement, your logistics planning, 3PL providers might integrate to your supply chain systems, your warehouse management, all those types of systems um, can, can tie into here as well. Another example would be business intelligence. So oftentimes companies find that these systems don't provide the proper analytics and reporting capabilities, so they need a third party bolt on business intelligence system. That's another example here. And so these are just a few examples. I'll stop there. I could list dozens of different systems, but these are the major ones that we oftentimes see with our clients. So when you're looking at a system architecture, we're looking at sort of where is the core of our business processes and our systems, and what are the systems they need to tie together. So ultimately what we're saying is these systems are all gonna tie together, oftentimes in more of a hub and spoke model. Sometimes you might have integration that goes be directly between these different systems. Oftentimes you end up with a spaghetti diagram of all the different touch points that happen between systems. But the first key is to understand what is the overall system landscape and where are the major touch points within those different systems. So the next part of system integration is to show not just where the integration points are, which is what we did here, but to illustrate and to highlight what the data flows are between systems. So I'll just give you a quick, simple example. Let's say we're starting here with the sales process. You have a salesperson that has closed a deal and they are due commission. So you're gonna have commission that's captured here in the sales or the CRM system. That commission now needs to tie back to your ERP system because now you've got a liability on the financial side of your ledger that says we owe that salesperson a certain amount of commission. So that shows up as a liability in your financials. So here you've got commissions that get fed to the ERP system. 
You also, as a result of these commissions, have something that needs to tie into payroll. So now our HR systems need to know how much we're going to pay that salesperson for the commission they closed. So the payroll info is going to be fed from the CRM or the sales processes here in this example. And that's just one example of how one simple transaction, one simple step in a process can tie to multiple systems or touch different systems. So your salesperson has closed a deal, there are due commissions that touches your financials, touches what payroll is due to them over here. Now it might trigger what's actually gonna point out uh, another system. Let's say you're a manufacturing organization and you, need, you have manufacturing execution systems, sort of your manufacturing planning systems. Now the salesperson has sold a widget that now you need to go produce. So your ERP software might create sort of a master production schedule for what types of manufacturing needs to happen. And that ERP software is now gonna feed to your manufacturing execution software. And that's gonna actually create an order or a, a production order, we'll call it. So you can see how this process over here triggers another step in the process that touches multiple systems. And these integration points are very critical. And I'm just showing you one simple example, but if you look at all the transactions in a typical business within all the different systems they use, this becomes a massive complex diagram that I'm showing you here. And so this is simplified intentionally. So the key here is to understand your end-to-end -end process flows, what systems are involved, where the touch points are, and how data flows between those different systems. Now, another consideration and thing that system architects need to solve is where does the data reside? So you can see data flowing back and forth. There's a lot of transactional stuff happening, a lot of touch points that happen between systems. But where does the master data reside? Where does the, where's the real source of truth here? When you've got multiple systems, the risk is you might have data over here that doesn't match up with the data here, that doesn't match up with the data here, for example. So the key is how do we make sure that the data stays in sync and that we know where the real source of truth is? Oftentimes organizations will pick a central system like their ERP software for many organizations that's sort of the master data and the single source of truth and that ends up feeding data back to the other systems. So for example, back to our sales example here with commissions, it may be that we've got a, a guy named Jim that's the sales rep that sold the product that uh, earned his commissions. The master data about Jim and all his, his uh, information about uh, his his benefits, his payroll, and all that stuff, that might reside over here in CRM. But over here in ERP, we've captured all the general ledger information, all the financial information, and the accounting books that need to be touched as a result of that. So we need to understand what the source of truth is, where the data resides, or where the, the source of truth is, but at the same time recognize that that source of truth needs to tie into other systems as well. So that whole aspect of data management is, is critical. And then also business intelligence, analytics, and reporting is critical. So even if you don't have a standalone business intelligence system, let's assume you don't have this for a minute, you might be relying on these systems over here to provide the reports, the analytics, the business intelligence you need, but you need to define as a system architect, what types of reports do we need and where are those reports going to pull the data that we need to get the visibility we're looking for. Now, one other secondary but really important consideration is cybersecurity. When you're a system architect, you have to look at what is the security here. How do we ensure that we haven't just tightened up security in our main system, whatever that might be, if you do have a main system, but also how have we tightened up security out here? Because if we have a security breach out here, that's ultimately going to affect the other systems as well. So cybersecurity is a, an important output from this whole system architecture exercise. It also helps us identify where the vulnerabilities are, what our cybersecurity strategy might be going forward. Now, the final thing I'll mention about system architecture is that this future state, let's assume that this is your future state architecture, this ultimately defines or will help inform what your implementation strategy looks like. If you're replacing some or all of these technologies, you need to figure out how we're gonna roll out the technologies, what the sequence is, what the priorities are, but also, in between phases, what are we going to do with those interim systems that are temporarily in place? So for example, let's just say we decide to leave these systems in place, but we're going to swap out our ERP system in phase one. And then in the next phase, we're going to get to our supply chain. Well, what are you going to do with that touch point in the meantime? You're going to implement new ERP software. You're going to build an interim touch point here, an interim integration point. But then you're going to have to replace that integration point when you replace this system. 
So it really gives you a good input and a good technical plan or technical input into what your overall implementation strategy as well. So I hope this has given you some advice or some things to think about as you think about system architecture and how it ties into your overall digital strategy and your digital transformation. I've also included some links below that provide additional best practices for digital transformation, including things like system architecture, but also looking at some of the people, process, and technology aspects of digital transformation and change. So I hope you found this information useful. Have a great day.